it's, it's good uh, to be with you today. This is our devotion for uh, September 13th. September 13th, and um, if you're following along with me, that's it. you can find that on page 715 of your treasury of daily prayer. Our psalm for today is psalm, a portion of Psalm 27. And today we begin reading uh, Paul's letter to the Colossians, to the church in Colossae. And we'll uh, take a look at the first chapter with that today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 27, beginning with uh, verse 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hide not your face from me, we pray. He tells us, seek my face, and our heart says, your, your face, Lord, do we seek, as, as, as David says here in this psalm. And we continue, we continue to seek him as he guides us and directs us through his word. Shall we look at Colossians chapter 1? Uh, let's let's read uh, begin reading Colossians chapter 1 Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy our brother to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae grace to you and peace from God our father we always thank God the father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of, and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God and truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. 
He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in order to present your holy, you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Wow, isn't this wonderful? Paul, Paul lays this out here very, very clearly, that Jesus is the one who has transferred us to the kingdom of his son, where we once were in the domain of darkness, as he says in here, and in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Paul goes on to say that he is the firstborn. Now this means that, that he is not Jesus. Jesus is of the same substance of the Father. Um, his, but we know that in the Trinity, he is the Son of God. And he was, he was sent to deliver us from our sins. But he was not created. He was not born. He's begotten of the Father. He's always been. And we know that elsewhere in Scripture, it tells us that through him, all things were made. And he is the head of the body. He is the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church. This is this is. This is uh, wonderful, wonderful good news for us once again. As, as uh, Paul sends this letter here to the church in, in uh, the, 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 the Colossians church, these are words of hope for you and I, dear saints. And he tells us here at the end that if indeed we continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, this is a reminder to us, dear saints, that we need stay in God's word. We need to know his word um, and not, not have our ears tickled from other things and, uh, that, that we may hear that are contrary to what the word of God says. You and I see and hear the, all of this kind of stuff. We don't have to look very far. If you look on the internet and, other, and, and uh, uh, social media, other places, we're going to hear and we're going to see things that are contrary to what God's word says. So, continuing in the faith, not shifting, not changing, not, not, not subjecting God's word to our own reason or understanding, but knowing that this is God's word that he's given us that gives you and life, you and I life, and increases our understanding, certainly. And, uh, but as, as we continue to remember that our reason, our understanding is subject to God's word as well, dear saints. When we, when we look at, uh, I think Paul lays this out very nicely. Look at the second article of, the, of our creed and we read this. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? The second paragraph here in the explanation says uh, says this he has redeemed me a lost and condemned person purchased and won me from all sins from death and from the power of the devil not with gold or silver but with his holy precious blood and with, with his innocent suffering and death this is most certainly true as Paul reminded us here that he is the one who delivered us from the, that domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son who won our redemption by the work that he did on his bloody cross 
dying on our behalf and rising again on our behalf so that in him you and I might know forgiveness of sins and have the gift of eternal life. Our prayer today, there is a wonderful prayer of the day here again for today, and uh, let's begin there. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Trusting in your promises, O Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, have a great day, knowing that Christ has redeemed you and your sins are forgiven. And I pray that you go in the peace of the Lord today, and I'll see you again tomorrow.